So it's really making people to get their brain open, you know, like to have an open mind. She's a woman that I respect. What she wants is to get married. All she wants to get up with the man. What she wants is to get married. My sister, she's a virgin. So if you get my heart, I just don't spit on my athlete, so I run the track. Run this track back, rewind it, and I'm a draw for rain in the dry season. My reason back to breathe life to this party season. Can't say also suka manja. Dina so wapakati ba ine dina. Come on, hey, hey, hey. Yes, it's that to oka susu manja. Dina waso patika ba ine dina. Makonda, hey. Uh, junior A&R manager at 14th Floor Records uh, that basically involves finding new acts, signing their record deal and then basically kind of being in charge of the musical output of that band and how we can develop them over a number of years. <laughs> the very first thing I brought in was uh, editors and that's kind of just through being friends with Tom the singer. I'm now involved with bands such as Biffy Clyro, The Wombats, Damien Rice, David Gray, Ray Lamontagne, there's relatively few, but they're all what I'd like to feel very successful artists. Well, I've been a a large part of my job, uh, as we're doing tonight, is going out and, and seeing you know, the raw talent. Friday night, 8 o'clock, um, going into the Underworld, see a band called Hunting the Minotaur, see how they're getting on. I know they've got some new songs in the set and yeah, see how it works out. You find yourself alone in a bar fight, facing off against the rest of the world. When I'm at a show seeing an unsigned artist, I'm always thinking about how they perform on stage, how they interact with an audience. But for me, first and foremost, it's always, it has to be amazing songs, and it has to be done in an interesting way. No, I have to think about how people are going to hear these songs, be it on the radio, be it from a press angle. It has to be a killer live show and the songs have to be absolutely fantastic. Good little band, young band. Um, they handled the crowd well, they, uh, you know, sounded good and uh, yeah, they played well tonight, so I enjoyed it. I'm going to catch them up again, maybe a month, two months, see how the songs are going. Yeah, this is good. I enjoyed it tonight. So the second band we're going to go and see uh, called Boy Crisis from, I think they're from Brooklyn. It's the first time in the UK, so I haven't seen them play yet. But the songs I've heard on MySpace, I'm really excited about. Oh no, where are we now? We're in a new place. Above it is bright, below it is dark. Everywhere we go, it's just a walk in the park. 
The nature of my job is very competitive because you want to feel that you're the first on those artists, that you're having a, a, a greater influence with those artists that the other A&Rs aren't. And there's some people, yeah, I don't get on well with um, for a variety of reasons, but I want to succeed. And sometimes that means by the people failing. So uh, that's kind of what happens. Second show in the UK, I think a bit nervous, but um, yeah, you know, very en energetic performance and I think there's some songs in there and it's kind of a cool vibe. Yeah, it's fun, I enjoyed that. I get paid for doing what I've always loved doing, which is listening and watching huge amounts of music um, and getting to see shows and talking to artists that um, I've always admired. It's just a dream come true, really. When we finished touring, uh, we all took a bit of a break. We came back here. Nick found this this place that we're in just now. Mm -hmm. It started off as a rehearsal room, and then we started doing demos here. Are you recording all these? And then we went down to London, did a little bit of recording, and realised that we actually preferred recording up here. So this is where we ended up. You can be a lot more experimental in a place like this because the acoustics aren't treated, the rooms don't sound as, as cold and neutral as they do in a recording studio. Coming on the da, 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 da. And that, Yeah, so after the yeah, first one. Right, okay. And also there's, there's, no, there's no kind of owners or technicians standing around and engineers telling you, no, you're not supposed to do it that way and, and you can do stupid stuff that you're not supposed to do and have a laugh and enjoy yourself. One of my favourite sort of production things is the Doppler thing where, or maybe you can explain. We had this massive swing here in this room and we put an amplifier in the middle and then attached a microphone to the cable and then swung the microphone from left to right and Alex played a, a solo and it had this amazing effect. You know, like the sound of a racing car going past or a Spitfire diving down. And I think all that sort of stuff adds up. It gives a, a record of vibe. Okay. It sounds a little different from our previous records. You can still tell it's, it's Franz Ferdinand because well, it's the four of us that made it. I guess more dance floor friendly. Is it a friendly record then? I think it may be, may be more friendly than its predecessor. Yeah, that's true. But its predecessor was a bit angry. Yeah, it's just like lighting up. <laughs> <laughs> We wrote our first record, you know, that took about the same amount of time, a little over a year to, to write. Uh, and it's good because you also have the opportunity to play them out to people as well. Because when you play a, a song to an audience, you know straight away what's good about it. And you also know which songs are crap as well, and you can drop those ones before you get anywhere near recording them.
Planet 55 is an imaginary uh, name for another planet which is in a solar system that is parallel to ours that it was recently found. It's a trip, trip, tricky flip, flip, wash your brain, it's insane. And my lyrics are about love, of course, I'm a young woman, and also some social problems that we are all facing this. Hey, this is our future. Tell me who would fight it inside the system. You'd buy your right. How should I feed the bait? My own flesh and blood. I think there is something going on now in Hungary and the hip hop scene, and it's going quite in, in, in different directions. More and more people are listening to dub, to dubstep, to breakbeat. Something that came in like 10 years ago in England, in London. Uh, we'll come to Hungary just a little bit later. Right from the top of the hill arriving Prison so hard but the fire still burning Beat by some power no stopping Earthquakes are shaking and all of a sudden This is our first official concert so we hope that uh, the people will like our music. <laughs> I'm Titus, we are called Belga, we are from Budapest and I'm the producer and the DJ of this sort of hip hop band and these guys are the rappers. <laughs> Vegas lyrics uh, are dealing with the common uh, reality around us uh, in everyday life, like traveling in cars or eating or drinking wine, something like this. But uh, it's uh, in a funny way. <laughs> Extra music is uh, what uh, uh, came from the socialist radios uh, around the 50s in Hungary. We call it extra uh, hip hop, but uh, it's better to say it's absurd. Little like Monty Python make uh, humor with hip hop group. <laughs> I'd probably describe the Dolna Kick sound as indie, dancey pop music. Mm. We all played in different bands before. Olivia was in like a ska band, I was in a kind of rock band, Chris was in kind of almost like a metal band. <laughs> but uh, it just kind of seemed to work after a while. <laughs> We've done gigs like The Great Escape in Brighton, which is really good. And we've done Glastonbury last year, which is when everything started really kicking off for us, I suppose. We did Beach Down this year. We played on the same stage as Reverend and the Makers and the Maccabees and lots of our yeah. favourite bands. <laughs> very important to us to have been asked to support Morrissey, it's a big deal. He came to see a couple of our gigs and then approached our management and asked if we would if we would support him on, on his tour, so we obviously said yes, please. <laughs> kind of trying to keep the whole indie indie scheme of things and trying to do everything ourselves as, as much as possible, so we're releasing Roll Up the Red Carpet on the 26th of January, I think. In the current climate with the music industry, it's very difficult to sort of 
get your head above water, really. More and more bands are kind of doing it themselves and less thinking about labels and, and needing that help from the labels. So I, I suppose we're kind of going down that route and it is difficult, but you know, it's hopefully worth it. <laughs> We're Buraka, Son Sistema from Lisbon, and um, we're not the band. <laughs> <laughs> We're just some sort of strange sound system project. We're pop stars here. <laughs> what we do is pick up different music from Angola and London. New York and we mix all that together and create our own genre. 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 <laughs> Kuduro started in Angola with a young producer that wanted to do something different than what his grandfather was doing and started to mix what his grandfather was doing with electronic music. Kuduro was already in our lives. It was a pretty, pretty much a local thing uh, around Lisbon. <laughs> We just thought that we should put it in our influences and uh, make our own version of it. As a big scene, we were the first guys to just make that crossover. People have heard about, about Kuduro throughout Portugal, but they have never seen the, the Kuduro like in a, in a serious way with getting so much attention from the media so they, they start to get curious and uh, I think we were like a fresh air in the Portuguese music industry. It was very clear from the minute that we decided to start this that it was going to be something that we wanted to take it in a different direction and we're not trying to do Kuduro, we're doing our own sort of music. Music 